Hello, citizen scientists. I'm excited that you're joining me today for the Eyes on Seagrass online training. My name is Kate Rose, and I am the Florida Sea Grant Extension Agent for Charlotte County. Seagrass is integral to the health and enjoyment of our local ecosystem, and the information that you collect as a part of this program will be used in health assessments that can be used by natural resource managers to make decisions about how best to protect it. Today, we will be reviewing the procedures for deploying a transect, assessing macroalgae and seaweed coverage, identifying seagrass, measuring seagrass blades, and measuring water clarity with the Secchi discs. We will provide a sampling kit to each volunteer team with the equipment that you will need to complete these procedures. Each kit should contain a measuring tape reel with a carabiner at the end of the tape, a PVC square, also called a quadrat, a PVC depth pole, two sets of weights, each with a loop, a Secchi disc, a dive flag with zip ties to attach it to your boat, a clipboard with at least one data sheet for each site that you plan to visit, a pencil to write on the data sheet, and a packet of laminated field guides that will assist you. You will notice that most pieces of equipment have a buoy on them, and that's so that you don't lose them when you set them down in the water. Your surveys will be in two to five feet, and we ask that you provide your own snorkeling equipment as well as sun protection. Let's jump into the methods. Like distance, GPS coordinates come in different units. It's important to make sure that you're using the correct unit to reach your desired location. We have provided GPS coordinates in degrees, minutes, seconds, and decimal degrees. When in doubt, just make sure the quotation marks, degrees, symbols, and or decimal points line up between your site and the device that you are using to get there. Once you've found a suitable survey site, deploy your transect line perpendicular to shore. Attach the two-weight bundle to the end of your transect tape using the facet carabiner. Lower the weights gently into the water and then drive towards or away from shore, paying out the transect line slowly while you drive. This process may also be easier on foot. If the water is too shallow to operate the boat without damaging seagrass, then definitely deploy your transect on foot. And these transects, while designed for use in marine environments, are not designed to be used as ropes. To help us make sure the equipment lasts, try not to put unnecessary tension on the line. Once you've fed out 50 meters of the tape, which should be about half the length, use the carabiner on the reel to attach the remaining weight and place it in the water. If you are deploying on a boat, don't try to lock the reel before placing it overboard. Final adjustments to the length should be made in the water to avoid putting the tape under tension. It doesn't matter which end of your transect you begin collecting data on. However, the order matters on the data sheet. Data collected at the end closest to shore should be recorded on the first line of your data sheet at the transect position zero meters. If you start at the end furthest from shore, just fill the data sheet in from the bottom up. Take your quadrat, depth pole, ruler, and mesh bag to the beginning of the transect line or to the next point along the line if you're repeating this step. Dive down with a quadrat and carefully lay it next to the line, lining up the edge of the quadrat and the transect tape. Take care to ensure that the seagrass blades extend through the quadrat and are not bent over under the PVC edges. A weight belt may assist you with reaching the bottom easily. Reach down and feel the sediment. Dig your fingers into the top half inch and feel the texture, but ensure you do not have gloves on. You can describe the sediment by grain size by checking off one of the five options in the sediment type column on your data sheet. Looking down on your quadrat from above, estimate the percentage that is covered by macroalgae if there is any in your quadrat. You have a laminated field guide in your kit to assist with this. Remove any unattached macroalgae from the quadrat and place it to the side so that you can see the seagrasses below. Assess percent coverage again. Next, you'll identify the species of seagrass within the quadrat and determine the percent contribution of each species to cover. Use the field guide Seagrasses of Southwest Florida to help with ID. The total composition for each quadrat must equal 100%. On the back of the field guide, Common Seaweeds of Southwest Florida, you will find a description for epibiota. The prefix epi means upon, so an epibiote is something that lives on another living thing. Using the guide, describe the density 
and decide whether the epibiodes are mostly fleshy or encrusting. You may need to look at the seagrass next to your quadrat as epibiota are often removed if, when you remove macroalgae from your quadrat. Using your ruler, measure the height of three seagrass blades from each species present in your quadrat in centimeters. For example, if there are two species of grass present in your quadrat, you should measure six blades. Place the zero end of the ruler at the base of the blade, close to the sediment. Pull the seagrass up gently to straighten the blade next to the ruler and record the height. Be sure you're measuring full blades, not broken ones. For example, turtle grass blades should have a rounded tip. If lots of blades are broken, you can note that in the comment section on your data sheet. Swim or walk along the transect line until you see the next 10 meter mark and repeat the procedure. Only at the 20 meter mark, carefully collect macroalgae within the quadrat, even if it's attached in this case, rather than setting it to the side. Transport it back to the boat in the mesh bag. Continue the survey until you reach the end of your transect the transect becomes too deep to safely swim along the bottom, or any other condition arises that may compromise your experience. Once the transect survey is finished, you can unlock the reel and walk or motor towards the loose end of the transect while winding the tape up. Be sure to only wind up the reel if there is slack in the line to reduce unnecessary tension on the transect tape. Now we will go over what to do with your algae back on the boat after you completed your survey. Place your algae sample into the mesh bag if it's not already there. To remove excess water from the sample, cinch the drawstring and swing the bag around in a circle for 60 seconds or until the sample is about 95% dry. Believe it or not, this is a technique that real field biologists use to remove water from algae samples. Once the sample is dry, dump it out on your boat deck. Pick through it, removing anything that isn't algae. Clumps of sand, snails, small crabs, or shells could affect the weight measurement. Weigh the macroalgae by putting it into a bag and hanging it on the hook on the bottom of the spring scale. Record the weight of your entire sample in grams, but only fill one sandwich bag to bring back with you. Depending on the amount of algae that you collect, you may find it easier to weigh it in the mesh bag or in the sandwich bag. If you use the sandwich bag, you can hang it on the spring scale by puncturing the plastic. If you have more macroalgae that can fit in a sandwich bag, try to get a healthy helping of each type of algae to bring back with you. On the Ziploc bag, record the date, time of day, and grid number with a Sharpie. Sharpies don't write when they are wet, so make sure that your hands and the Ziploc bag are dry before writing on it. Once the ink is dried, place the macroalgae samples in the provided insulated bag with the ice. We will measure water clarity with the Secchi disc, or the circle with black and white quarters in your kit. Attach the disc to the end of your transect tape using the carabiner that was previously used to attach the double bundle of weights. On the shady side of the boat and with your sunglasses removed, slowly lower the Secchi disc into the water until it is no longer visible. Record the depth of the disc by reading the length on the measuring tape at the waterline. This can best be achieved by pinching the measuring tape at the waterline and then bringing it to your eye line. If you can see the disc on the bottom, record the depth as greater than bottom and indicate the depth of the water. With your sunglasses back on, look up and estimate percent cloud cover. We need to preserve any macroalgae samples the same day as collection to meet standards for analysis at a UF lab. Somebody will be at the UF IFAS Extension office during business hours. Turn in your complete data sheet and your equipment with your macroalgae samples. If you're planning to participate in another sampling event this year, you may hold on to your gear. We recommend rinsing it thoroughly with fresh water and allowing it to dry completely before storing it in order to avoid mold. All gear should be returned after the July survey so that it can be used for other programs.